Guys, we have planning. <laughs> After 12 to 18 months, we're back at the free flats and now we've got planning to go into the lost space to create an extra dwelling and do a double story rare extension. This deal was one hell of a deal. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I opened up a huge can of worms, but again, through the challenges, the bumps, I was able to overcome it. And I'm standing here with planning and a massive uplift on the apartments. As you can see here, there's still a lot to do around here, but inside we've been able to do the internal refurb, refurb on two of the flats. I've been able to refinance on one of them as well. So now you'll be able to see the vision is coming to life. I'm going to be washing all these bricks. These bricks are going to be cleaned, going to be repointed. We're going to take up the whole driveway here and create some extra parking space. So what I'm going to do right in this video, I'm going to go through exactly what we're going to be doing, what we got planning for, and the next steps in terms of what happens now that we have planning. So, firstly, looking into this area here, as you can see, all, this, all of this flooring is to come up, and all of this flooring is to be dug up and resurfaced, and in the planning, we've actually got three parking spaces that it's gonna accommodate for. So, as you look can see here, we're gonna have three parking spaces dedicated to each of the flats here. So that's one, two, three, and then we've got planning for two extra spaces on this side here. Now let's go into the back and I'll tell you what's happening there. So essentially, you guys will see as we walk through, I'm still experiencing a huge problem with the amount of rubbish on site from some of the tenants, right? Well, they're not my tenants, it's one of the leaseholders. Um, one of the leaseholders' tenants, essentially. But again, if you've watched Kazi's video, you see I am going to be handling that. Um, it is a bit of a sight. It looks like a car boot cell at the moment. Bro, what's that on it? This can't be all your rubbish. Nah, ah, yeah, it's a long story. <laughs> so, what's going on? There's so much things that are beyond my control at this point because, you know, property is a people's game and sometimes you just can't control people. And best believe this is not my rubbish. So, yeah, this is another headache I have to solve. But, you know, what I say is I am a problem solver. So, as you can see, there is so much space in the land and so much development opportunity, which is one of the first things I saw when I came to the back here. And now let's take a look around and what's actually going to be happening to the building. So back and forth with the planning office, we went in for a pre-app. So initially our first plans was to create a double story extension here where we'd be creating a unit on top of this original extension here. So we was looking to get a one bedroom flat on top and then we was looking to get another one bedroom flat in the loft space. So after um, some of the conversations that we was having with the planning office, it was they showed concerns around, around loss of family homes and the need for family homes. So a family home in this, uh, in this borough is, is considered as like three bedrooms. So what we did instead to ensure and increase our chances of trying to get the planning ex granted, what we went in for, we went in for a double story extension still, which kind of wraps around the whole building. However, the ground floor one bedroom flat, we're going to be turning that into a three bedroom flat. So we're going to be creating an extension at the back and we're going to be going up a story so it's going to be a split level three bedroom house. So then that would be fit for purpose for a family which is essentially helping the, the local authority hit their targets. And that's what you want to be doing because when you're talking about going in for planning applications and planning permission, you don't want to be fighting with the council, you want to be working together with the council. So that's what going through pre-app allowed us to do because essentially if we did decide to go in for the two extra units we probably just would have been refused rejected straight away because it just doesn't even align with the direction that they're trying to go in so with that being said we wasn't able to get the extra unit on the ground floor but we've increased 
this from a one bed to a three bed, which actually works out very similar when, we, when I was looking at the figures, because if I was getting another unit in there, I'd have to consider cost of services, extra material costs, because I'm getting new sets of kitchen, new sets of bathroom, and all of those things there. So I don't actually have to do that anymore. And as a three bed, I'm still getting a good end value. If you're watching this video and you're completely new to property and you're finding it a bit hard to understand the concepts and understand some of the jargon that I'm speaking at the moment, then head over to learnproperty.uk where you'll be able to get a full complete beginner's guide course that goes through all the foundation knowledge within under two hours that will help you get started and streamline your process. Now, luckily, we were still able to get our flat in the roof space, which is really good. So that's essentially going to be the biggest increase in value. So on the profit margins on that alone, I'm looking at around an excess of £100,000 in just going into the loft to create the extra one bedroom flat, which will be really good. So as you can see in the neighbor's back garden, there's so much more development opportunity there as well. And what's getting me really excited is that when I went on the planning portal, they've actually put in an application to build a small block of flats just there. So they've gone in for four two bedroom flats and one one bedroom flat. So fingers crossed, they get that accepted because then again, there's so much more opportunities on here. Right, either I'm able to replicate that, but there's a caveat because there's houses on the other side, or there's an opportunity to strike a deal with them with my extra land space, maybe sell that to them as well, because they might need some extra um, recreational space for the users within that property as well. So there's loads of different opportunities there. So I've gotten in contact with that developer and I've essentially told him, you know what, I'm here to make a deal. So let's fingers crossed you get that because then we can all win together. Now, just for reference, exactly what I've received planning for, I am replicating what the developer next door has been able to achieve. And as you can see here, it's much brighter, much more attractive and habitable area um, for this one. So that's exactly what I'm trying to achieve. I'm just running with what there is president of already. So coming into it, yes, there was a big risk of do, taking on this type of development, but I've been able to see that someone has achieved it before. So it's essentially just trying to work with that and seeing how I can also achieve it. So now planning permission has been granted. The next steps is to get the construction drawings drawn. And once they've been drawn, I can go out to tender to different construction teams to see who is reliable and who can build this out for me in the next six months. So guys, there's gonna be so many more updates on this channel. So stay tuned, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.